Hey everyone, I am Jere Lehtinen from Alt University. In this short video, I will demonstrate you how to use stakeholder map and power interest matrix. Stakeholder map and power interest matrix are tools to analyze project stakeholders and to create stakeholder management processes for a project. Before dwelling into the topic, I would like to highlight the key learning outcome of this video. After this short video, you're able to apply stakeholder mapping and power interest matrix techniques to analyze project stakeholders. The stakeholder map analyzes the problems and proposed solutions that different stakeholders have for the project and whether these stakeholders can be considered as proponents or opponents of the project. Let's demonstrate the stakeholder map with a simple example. Here's an example of a stakeholder map concerning a project of which mission is to construct a shopping center. This shopping center project has four stakeholders, residents, developer, operator and municipality. We can see that the residents are opponents of the project while municipality developer and operator are proponents. Now let's consider some examples of problems and solutions that these stakeholders may bring into this project. First, the residents have a problem that they are very concerned about the collaboration between stakeholders as they have been somewhat excluded from the project. The residents are particularly concerned about the social and cultural heritage of the area and think that the new shopping centre might ruin it. Hence, as a solution, the residents will increase the general awareness of the social and cultural heritage so that the other stakeholders will consider it in the designing the project. Next, the developer's problem is that it has no previous experience with large so shopping centres and the developer is unsure how, about how to consider the future commercial operations already in the designing so that the project could be a success in long term. As a solution, the developer has decided to collaborate with the operator from early on to make sure that the commercial operations will be a success. In turn, the operator's problem is that there is a great deal of uncertainty concerning the total shopping center volume. This is because of municipalities' uncertain town planning and the space given for shopping centre. This uncertainty complicates operators' plans regarding how to confirm future key commercial tenants. As a solution, they propose certain amendments to the town plan that should be locked in from early on. This, uh, this secures enough volume so that they can advance with their plans concerning locking in future tenants. Lastly, the municipality's problem is that the town planning procedure is slow and lengthy that hinders the project's progress. As a solution, they have come up with an idea to team up with the developer and operator. Together, they aim to invent a reference, pro reference planning protocol that kind of bypasses the formal town planning procedure and speeds up the development. As you can see, Stakeholder map can be a quite nuanced description, but concurrently it is very static. It is likely that stakeholders and their problems and related solutions change over time. So, to unleash more of this tool's potential, it could be used over the project's life cycle to draw multiple maps from different project phases. All right, next, power interest matrix is a tool to analyze project stakeholders' relationship to decision-making over the project's life cycle. By, group, by grouping stakeholders into the power interest matrix, project management can produce a better understanding of how communication and relationships between stakeholders has affected the project. The tool offers a 2x2 two two matrix with two dimensions of power and interest that seek to analyze two questions concerning each stakeholder at a given time. How interested is each stakeholder to influence project decisions and how much does each stakeholder have power to influence project decisions? This interest and power is assessed in relative terms, that is by comparing stakeholders to each other and positioning them in the matrix respectively. This can be done by using a scale from low to high or a scale from 0 to 10 for instance. For this example I have relied on a scale from low to high. Even though this 
this tool seems like a simple 2x2 two two matrix, it can be used in quite nuanced and fine-grained way. For instance, let's consider an imaginary shopping center project in three stages, design, implementation and operations, to illustrate how to use the tool. In design phase, the shopping center developer is very interested in the project and have a high power to influence their decisions about designing the shopping center. However, the municipality has higher power to influence the decisions due to the legal city planning procedure that influences the shopping center designs, such as building height. In turn, the residents in the area are very interested in it as well and have some power to influence the decisions due to the right of appeal that can influence the plan. Lastly, the operator has quite much interest, but relatively low power to influence the project's decision making at this stage. In implementation, once the design has been accepted and the town plan is finalized, the shopping center developer gains more power to influence the implementation according to their schedule, budget and so on. In turn, the municipality is not that interested anymore compared to the design phase as the town plan has been finalized. The residents, on the other hand, lose their power to influence the decisions because they cannot anymore appeal against the plans that have been accepted. At this stage, the operator's interest has increased as they are concerned about how the project progresses and when it will be handed over to them. However, operator do not have much power to influence the decisions regarding the implementation because the plans have been finalized. In operations, the shopping center developer has handed over the project's end product to operator and can be considered to have low interest and power to influence the decisions concerning operations. Unless developer and operator have some kind of a maintenance contract, but let's assume for the sake of this example that they do not have such a deal. In turn, the operator has all the interest and power to influence the decisions about running the shopping center. The municipality might stay more or less the same, but it might be that its interest has increased to see what kind of public services could be incorporated into the new shopping center. However, the municipality does not have much power over the decisions of commercial operations. Lastly, the residents have increased their interest as they can now use the shopping center services, but they do not really possess any power over the decisions about operations. To give you some food for thought, I have prepared a question for you to consider. How do you think that a stakeholder's position in the matrix influences stakeholder management activities and why? For eager students, I've listed some further readings in this concluding slide. Right, that's all folks. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.